massive waste, massive corruption, yes. and exactly what we're trying to expose and what we're trying to prevent. I saw what the government intends to do. Yes. They want to lock your ass down. Yeah. They want to close your business. Yeah. They want to take your assets. And yeah. now they want to put you in a 15 minute city yeah, yeah. and oh, everybody knows about this. Yes. They want you to own nothing and be happy. A car is freedom. You can travel from one side of the world to the other. Yeah. They don't want that for you. They don't know dick all about why <laughs> they're doing what they're doing. I've been arrested 26 times in the last Gosh. 30 months. But I'm not worried about that. I'm not like Trudeau. I don't have people that hate me so much that I have to walk around with more security than there are people in the crowd. YG, do you still have beef with this guy? I have no idea who the hell YG is. To me, he's some stupid guy pretending like he's a rapper. Oh, yeah. YG, why don't you tell him about your dad and what he got caught doing? You guys know about YG's dad? No. How he no. likes it. Yeah, ask him about that. Guys, welcome back. Today, we have Chris Sakocha, also known as Chris Sky, the guy that always somehow gets canceled whenever successfully canceled. <laughs> welcome to the podcast, Chris. Like it's really nice having you on here. Thank you. We're going to talk about politics. You're running for mayor. We're going to talk about some things that have happened in our country that uh, some of us aren't happy with. Some of us have just allowed it to happen. Um, we're going to dive deep into this one, but yeah. Man, this one's going to be crazy. This one's going to be But sick. Chris, let's start off. And I know... You have a lot of podcasts. We actually saw some podcasts of you talking about your upbringing. But just briefly, just for the listener who doesn't, haven't heard your story, can we get a, a start? Quick no problem. Um, my last name is Sococcia, is Italian. Both my parents are from Italy. My mom was actually born in Italy. My father was actually born in Canada, but then they moved back to Italy when he was less than two years old. Okay. And then moved back to Canada again a few years later. Uh, I was born in North York. I'm 39 years old. I lived in North York, I lived in Vaughan, I lived in Markham, I lived in King City, I've lived in North York, I've lived all over the GTA. Uh, I was very good at school. I was exemplary in the lower grades. They wanted me to skip grades. I didn't wow. want to do that because I didn't want to be younger than everybody else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just stuck with the normal thing. I graduated high school with honors. I went to school for sports medicine. Okay. But at the same time, I was working at the family business which was Sky Homes, which is yes. where the name Sky comes from. Yes. Oh. Where an award-winning develop, design, and build uh, firm for residential properties. And uh, I was working there at the same time as I was going to school. And I had the ability to continue with the schooling or expand the business and choose a career path at a young age. So when I was like 18, 19, uh, I was already working with the government, but as well as the private industry. So I have a very unique perspective on yeah. any of the other candidates that are running. A lot of them have a lot of public experience, oh, yeah. which mm -hmm. is not a good thing. <laughs> Usually that's, <laughs> that's a bad thing. But none of them have really any private experience. And absolutely none of them have the experience where I was working in the private sector under the budgetary and time constraints of the private sector, but beholden to all the bureaucracy and red tape of the public sector simultaneously. And yet somehow... I was able to cut through those layers of tape yeah, 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 yeah. and get the job done every single time. So mm -hmm. I'm the only person that can say they have decades of experience working within the public sector, but as efficiently as if it was the private sector. Yeah. And what's the, thank you. And what's the number one problem with our government? It's waste and corruption. If our government was a private business, it would have been bankrupt a million times oh, already. Sure. Oh, for sure. So why can't we run our government more efficiently like a yes. business? Yes, yes. That's, that's the way we look at it. Okay. Wow. So uh, my, background, my background went from development, design, and build, and, and an interest in sports medicine to becoming an activist yeah. uh, in 2020 when COVID happened. Yes. Not by choice, because the last thing I ever wanted to do, I don't believe in politics. I never voted in my life. <laughs> so, yeah. Isn't that funny? I'm running for office, but I never voted. <laughs> People ask me, how do I go and vote for you? I'm like... God, uh, go to the voting booth and <laughs> vote for me. I don't know. I've never done it. But no, I'm actually going to have to make an instructional video to show people how to go vote because yes. we believe that a lot of the people that are going to go and vote for me are the people like Who wouldn't me vote. Yeah. that normally don't vote. Of course, of course. And do you know how many people that is? Yeah. A lot. Do you know how many people actually voted for John Tory in the 2022 election? No. Did Only you vote? Have you ever voted for mayor? No. Never. I don't think I ever have either. There was only 29% of the eligible people allowed to vote that actually voted in the election. Whoa. 29%. Yes. That wow. means 71% of sat eligible Torontonians yeah. sat at home and said, 
None of these people represent my interests. Of course. None of these people are going to make my life or my community any better. Wow. So why am I going to get my ass off this couch yes, and yes. go vote for them? Yes. Answer, 71% of people said I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah. So now they expect even less people to go because it's just a by-election. Yeah. And it's only for mayor. Yes. In the last election, it was mayor, councilors, yeah, yeah, et cetera, yeah, 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 all yeah, yeah. these other people. So there's a lot more interest. Mm. So now they're expecting something like only 10% no of the eligible people, which is would be, there's around 3 million eligible voters. So 10% participation would mean only 300,000 eligible people vote. Wow. 2.7 million people stayed home. So if we can get even 50,000, 60,000 of the 3 million people that, or sorry, the 2.7 million people that normally don't vote and just get them to get up and vote one time yes. in their life, this one time, this time. we will win. But yes. not only win, we will win by a historic margin wow. right. and their worst nightmare will become reality. Okay. Politicians will be replaced by public servants. Okay, wow. that, that's, that's what I really want you to, to put a clear picture because a lot of our viewers are the younger audience, okay? Yes. And can you, in a nutshell, why is it important that we choose our mayor? Because I feel like when we have the, the prime minister election of whose who's party you're going to take over, everyone takes it more serious. The parents are talking. Mm -hmm. They take their kids to vote for whoever they want to vote for. In reality, it's the opposite. Yeah. So give us a, give us a rundown. Like, why is it important that we're picking our mayor of our city? Okay, first of all, the federal election everyone takes so seriously when in reality... There's only two mathematical possibilities <laughs> every election. Conservative or liberal. Yeah, yeah, every yeah, election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only difference is who can make up the minority government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, big deal. That's it. In a municipal election, there are no political parties. Yeah. So you get the best person for the job. Yes. Period. And you get an ability to unite the entire city. Yes. And you have people that are making decisions that affect your daily lives and right. your specific communities. Yes. It's far more important than the federal. Yes, yes. Because if you get a strong mayor like me in place that can actually work for your best interests, even when Justin Trudeau does things that are not against your best interests, like a whole new round of mandates and business closures, a mayor like me can nullify that with bylaws of my own. So we can protect Toronto from the government agenda. And we already saw what the government intends to do. They yes. want to lock your ass down. Yeah. They want to close your business. Yeah. They want to take your assets. And yeah. now they want to put you in a 15-minute city. Yeah, yeah. And oh, everybody knows about this. Yes. They want you to own nothing and be happy. Mm -hmm. all, the other, all the other politicians that are running are talking about rent controls and lowering rent. I'm the only one that's talking about creating the conditions where young people and lower income people will actually be able to be homeowners once again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine that. Oh, you sure. talk to the average young person up to 20, 25 years old, where are they going to get the money for a down payment for a home these days? Unless they have their parents to help them, they're in a six figure job and they're one of the very few lucky ones, or they're in a relationship with somebody else who's making as much money as them and they put their money together. Yeah. How are they gonna afford a house? Mm -hmm. Answer, they can't. What's the other, what's all the other candidate solution? Oh, we're gonna make rent more affordable for you. What's my solution? We're gonna create, create jobs, GDP, bring in billions of dollars of investment into the city, and we're gonna do private and public partnerships with developers and the city to create high density residential developments where a certain percentage of the units are sold to the city at a big discount yes. where the city can then provide rent to own programs mm. for young people or lower income. Yes. So imagine the students that are in downtown Toronto paying 1500 bucks a month each, two guys like you staying at one place as roommates and you're living there for four or five years and you're spending 15, three grand a month between yeah, two yeah, yeah, yeah. and where's it going? Straight out the door. What are you going to think about with the rest of your money? You're going to spend it on whatever the hell you want because yeah. you're not getting an investment in your future. Yeah. For sure. But if you're in a rent-to-own program yeah. and now each of you young men are going to end up owning 50% of that building, yeah, are you going to yeah. be spending every dollar you make or are you going to be trying to save for your future? And yes. are you actually going to ha have pride in yourself because now you have something that you're going to own. Yes. You're going to own something and be happy. Yes. In my Toronto, uh, in their Toronto, you're going to own nothing and be happy according yeah, to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's just one of the things we want to do for the young people. One of the other obvious things, the other big problem that's affecting everybody is the traffic. And the traffic yes. we have is absolutely <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's I believe it's intentional by design. 
Because what do we have? We have, first of all, we have a ridiculous amount of construction yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. vast majority of it is not even being used. On the way here, we saw at least a dozen different construction sites where you have cranes and all these other superbly expensive equipment literally just sitting there being paid for to do absolutely nothing except take up space. Then you get downtown and you go to places like Eglinton and Avenue Road, oh, where Eglinton. it's a huge intersection yeah. with nonstop vehicle traffic. And what do they do? They created a sidewalk that's as wide as this unit we're in. Yeah. And they have a bike lanes that take up, the sidewalk and bike lane take up about 70% of the roadway. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're standing on the sidewalk and you're the only pedestrian and the only bike, and you're surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of nonstop cars. There's so many things that they're doing. And oh, what do yeah, they yeah. do? They, they, what do they do? Do they expand the TTC? No, they want to shut it down. They want to kill the union, shut down the TTC. They, they have muggings and all kinds of problems on the TTC daily because people are unhappy with the conditions of their city. We want to create a new corporation within the city government that allows for a private company, private companies to bid on expanding the TTC mm. with new subway lines that are going to come from private investment. Yeah. So it's not gonna cost the city a dollar. Yeah. In fact, it's gonna make us revenue because yeah. we're gonna bring in jobs, we're gonna bring in GDP, yeah. and we're gonna bring in billions of dollars of outside investment. The, the companies are also gonna be responsible for now repairing and maintaining the whole TTC infrastructure. Yeah. So that is now tens of millions of dollars we are saving yearly and yeah. a whole bunch of uh, manpower that we can now reappropriate to better sources. This is going to provide much better, much more accessible, much better for the environment, yes. transportation. And the best part is it's going to take the traffic congestion yes. off the roadways mm -hmm. yes. and enable people to be productive. Imagine you could save two hours a day of not driving around. That's days a year. Yeah, That's yeah. like an extra 30 days a oh, year for sure. oh, for of sure. productivity for yeah, each yeah. person in the city. Oh, for sure. Then what's the other problem? We all saw the lineup at the food bank the other day. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous that our government feels that our people, first of all, should be in the condition where they need to line up to get food from the government. Yeah. If a government's doing their job right, more and more people, less and less people should, should be, be on government up. assistance yes, yes, yes. and lining up. But what's the answer? It's always more government. And what happens? You create longer and longer lineups like that. We think there's a better way. We have a plan, and I don't want to give away the details because they're going to try to yeah. steal it. So I'm yeah, just going to show yeah, people yeah. exactly what yeah, we're doing yeah, because yeah, I know yeah. they're not going to figure well, out how we're doing it. We're going to lower food prices for everyone in the GTA while increasing accessibility to certain fruits and vegetables the entire year round. Yes. And we're going to be able to do it by reducing the transport costs and by increasing uh, the production of local food products. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, Chris, so when we spoke at the gym, he actually did tell me this plan, so off camera. It's actually quite interesting. We'll tell you off camera as well. Another <laughs> thing, you 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 briefly touched upon this, um, and I guess just a two part question. The first thing is, we all know Eglinton's like a fucking meme. Everyone's like, why is Eglinton in construction for like fucking twenty years? Do you actually know why, or is it just? To me, I think that's literally a perfect example of massive waste, massive corruption, yes. and exactly what we're trying to expose and what we're trying to prevent. Okay. That is a perfect example. If everyone wants to see how a government operation operates, it's right there. And yes. to me, that's one of probably the longest ongoing money laundering operations <laughs> in our city. Because I met my wife almost 13 years ago now. Okay. And there was a hole in the ground there when I met her 13 years ago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 13 years, people Nuts. can build an entire city, let oh, yeah. alone redo God. an intersection and some underground. It's absolutely ridiculous. And that's what's going on with all the construction in the city yeah. if you drive around. You can't drive, drive down Eglinton. Yeah, you yeah, count yeah. the number of so-called construction zones you <laughs> yeah. go in in about 10 kilometers. This is not by accident, this is by design. They, and, they need to, and they need to fix this, but they don't have the ability because the people that have been running government for many, many years these are people that have never run a business. These are people that have never been successful. These are people that don't know how to make money or manage money. Yeah. So how do you expect them to manage a city? Olivia Chow is up there. I'm going to make everything more affordable. What's her background? She has an art degree. What did she do for a living before she became a politician? She was a sculptor. So she could create you a little sculpture of a beaver. <laughs> but now she thinks she's qualified to run a city and manage a multi-billion dollar budget. 
<laughs> yeah, give me a friggin' break. Well, <laughs> and we know she's a liar. We know she's a huge liar. Why? Just check this in if nobody believes this. Her husband, the, the late Jack Layton, was found naked in an Asian massage parlor as it got raided by the police. This is, you, can, you can find this online. No, it's no on way. the Daily Mail and other newspapers. And he was literally caught with his pants down in a known Asian massage parlor that got raided because they were obviously, it was obviously a brothel. A massage, yeah. And yeah. Olivia Chow made a statement stating that it was not an illegal place. He was just there for a normal massage, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. So how can anyone have any respect? At least, at least be like, okay, yeah, he was having a little fun or say something, but don't blatantly lie. But Gosh, that's what they do. And another perfect example of how much these people care about you. We went to an event in Olivia Chow's neighborhood. Okay. She didn't show up. It was an event for mayoral candidates. I thought, and everybody else was so shocked. Oh my God, I can't believe she didn't show up. Like, I knew she wasn't going to show up. They're like, how did you know that? How do you know all these things? No way. Pretty simple. You know how I know? Because they don't care about you. Yeah, yeah. So mm. why is she going to show up to a place with a stronghold for her? She uh, knows all those people are going to vote for her anyway. Uh, so she doesn't even care enough to go there and wave and smile and pretend oh, like she cares shit. enough about you. So imagine what she's going to do for you once she gets elected. Wait, so why, why did you go? You just went for vice? I went there because I will go everywhere, You've every been opportunity going everywhere. Yeah. I You've can been going to everywhere. meet with the people. Nice. Because the media isn't going to show me. Mm. Or if they do, they're going to slander me. Even the media, us trying to get advertisements on the radio right now. They've been in legal for over a week. Because no they way. know that we needed the ads run now between now and May yeah. 17th when the polls close right. for the debate that's coming up yes, on May 24th. Yeah. Yes. So they disqualified. I gave them three separate commercials. They disqualified the first two and said they needed to be edited. The first one, because I introduced myself and say, hey, hey guys, it's Chris Sakocha, a.k.a. Chris Guy, a.k.a. the next mayor of Toronto. They're like, sorry, you can't call yourself the next mayor of Toronto. I was like, okay, that one kind of makes sense. Sure, sure. I, I, okay, maybe that, so I didn't say anything. The next one was, I am Chris Skye, and for the last three years, I've been fighting for your rights. They're like, sorry, you, you can't say that. You can't say what? That you've been fighting for people's rights. What do you mean? I was fighting for people's rights. Yeah, but who gave you the legal authority to do that? Oh my I go, excuse me, so I needed legal authority bestowed upon me by somebody <laughs> else to stand up for rights. Me standing up for rights doesn't count because you say I didn't have any legal authority and therefore I cannot say this in the commercial. Like, exactly. Fair enough. Wow. The last commercial. Hi, I'm Chris Sakocha. And because I'm the only person that's a public servant and not a politician, you can contact me directly at 416-400-9994. They're like, whoa, you gave out your phone number. I'm like, yeah. What's your point? Well, we need to know that you have consent to do that. Well, what? me telling you in my own voice, my own phone number, which is on my election stuff as well, isn't providing consent. They're like, no, no, we need you to sign an attestation form. Fine. It's a standard form. My campaign manager has multiple versions right on his desktop. We'll have that to you in three minutes. No, sorry. It's got to come from our legal team. We've been waiting days now wow. for this supposed form wow. so I could get at least one of my commercials on the air before May 17th. Damn. For, this is the kind of stuff we're going okay. through. And the other media company simply hasn't called us back. They just said it's illegal and, and they've been... And they've been uh, they, so they're doing everything they can. Not only are they barring me off the media, not only do they have supposed independent sources... Uh, with bios on me that make me look like a villain from an action movie. Have you seen the local? The local newspaper. They even have an Instagram page yeah. or a, a Twitter page. It bills itself as a independent local <laughs> newspaper, and it has fact-checked candidates uh, bios on every candidate. Okay. You look at mine. It calls me everything from a Hitler supporter. So, like I everything guess, I think I've seen says that, I have yeah. no platform that I speak Some of. I'm just trying thing. to take people's money. Mm -hmm. I've been arrested multiple times. Literally, the most defamatory thing I've ever read about myself in my life. Wow. And this is supposed to be my candidate bio from this independent magazine. And then you click on their sources of funding, and there's all these foundations. And then at the bottom, it has the Government of Canada logo, and it says, funded by the Government of Canada. No way. So we have the government slandering me. We have the media denying I exist or pretending I'm some kind of a joke. Uh, and then we have 
like I said, we have the other thing where they're just trying to slander me in every way possible. Wow. The only thing we have going for us is the actual support of the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what we actually need. So that's sure. that's the good thing. Okay, Chris, well, I got it. We got one second. Let's yeah. let's circle go back ahead. for a second. Let's circle back for a second. Let's go before 2020. All right. Okay. Who was Chris Guy before? Like, were you? Did you already have a? Because I only I remember seeing you during the trucking rallies and a little bit before that, the anti-masking campaigns, the anti what's it called, um, closing lockdown, all, all those stuff, campaigns, yeah. and I really fucked with the message. It was so cool. But who was Chris Guy before that? I was. The guy who was basically in charge, VP of Sky Homes Corporation. So we were doing developments all over Canada. I was married to my wife, and our favorite thing to do was travel the world. Okay. So as you can see, she's pretty gorgeous. We would travel all, uh, to over 40 countries. I've been to over 100 cities, and we would post all our travels on our Instagram. Yeah. Okay. So because we were with her and other good-looking girls, we had quite a follow. We had over 100,000 people on Instagram before COVID started. Mm -hmm. And I was always the kind of guy that was talking about the government, letting okay. people know, but I, not in an activist way. Okay. More like in an antagonist, satirical way, yeah, yeah, just yeah. to poke fun at the whole system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing serious. Yeah. But then when COVID happened, we were thrust literally right into the middle of it. My wife, it was her birthday on February 27th, 2020, we landed in Venice on that day for Carnival, which is the big event that they've been doing yeah. since the 1700s where everyone dresses up in the costume. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she was so excited. It was on her bucket list. And we landed on her birthday in Venice, and it was the last day of Carnival, which is supposed to be the biggest day of celebration. And boom, as soon as we got off the plane, they played a siren, and they canceled Carnival for the first time in the history of Italy. Wow. I was like, okay, what are we going to do? Thankfully, everything was still open. Yeah. Nothing yeah. was yeah. closed down, so we were having a Start normal early, vacation. Yep. But then we started getting calls because they're portraying Venice as the epicenter of the virus yeah. in yeah. Europe. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. was then. Oh, yeah. I was there yeah. with so, her. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. on the ground, it was fine. Like, she's shopping. I'm at the gym. We're just having a normal Italian vacation. But mm -hmm. the, everyone's calling us like there's dead bodies piling up in the streets of Venice. But it just wasn't true. Yeah, I remember even hearing that there's a garbage truck filled with dead bodies. Yes. And you can't transport enough to... It was, it was such lies. Wow. And right away, we knew it was lies because we were literally we were there. there. But at the same time, when they started talking about locking Venice down, we're like, okay, we don't want to get stuck here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we left and we went south to Florence, spent a couple of days there. Then they were going to lock down Florence. And we left Italy about three days before they locked down all of Italy. Spent a couple of days in Netherlands, a couple of days in France before we came home early March. Hmm. Two weeks before they locked us down here. So right when we came back, we started telling everybody, they're going to lock us down, they're going to lock us down. Everyone was saying, oh, don't listen to him, he's crazy, don't listen to her, she's stupid. Da -da -da -da. Sure enough. They locked us down. Yeah. Didn't know what the hell to do. I was just freaked out. And I knew that the first thing that was going to happen with a lockdown is all the small businesses are going to get screwed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm an economist type person. Uh, the, the small businesses represent over 90% of all the businesses in Canada. Really? Wow. And they represent up to 70 plus percent of the jobs in Canada. Really? Yes, sir. So not the Walmarts, the Costco. No. Really? 90% of all businesses in Canada are the small businesses you drive by every day. Wow. And 70% of all our jobs in Canada are connected directly small to those small businesses. 70% is nuts. So wow. the very first thing I did that I thought would help is I made a nonprofit called Back to Work to okay, start yes. teaching people about this, about how important our small business was, how it's the true backbone of our economy and yes. our GDP, and how... The number one casualty is going to be small business. Yeah, if we yeah. lock down people and we don't let them open their business, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously their business cannot sustain. Yeah. Yes. And someone like us that owns a construction business, it's even worse because we have large holdings that yeah. have interest payments monthly, not just salary, not just rent, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So for someone like me, it was catastrophic. Yep. So we needed to get the word out. We needed to get things moving and we needed to save the economy. Because as I predicted in 2020 on video, I predicted we were going to lose around 30% of our small businesses, which equates to around 20% of all our jobs. And surprise, surprise, fast forward to 2023, and it shows that we lost about 30% of our small businesses. And that means we lost around 300 thousand small businesses that's wow. nuts. and even at five employees per business that's 1.5 yeah. million jobs lost. Wow. and it's actually far worse than that because a small business is up to 50 employees wow. so the amount of catastrophic destruction and not from covid let's be real yeah, from yeah, yeah. the government response to covid mm -hmm. goes so far beyond 
uh, just the mandates and, every, and all the inconveniences that people suffered. There's so much financial calamity, so much mental health problems. All these things are attributed to the government response, okay. not COVID itself. They used it as a vehicle to prime society for now the new climate change agenda. Because mm. COVID was get us ready for lockdowns and restrictions mm -hmm. on our lives in every way possible under the guise that it was only temporary and for our safety. But really, it was to get us used to the idea that personal rights and freedoms are not paramount to a successful society like all the world wars we fought over to preserve them. Yeah. In fact, they're actually selfish and dangerous. And the soldiers and warriors and heroes that would preserve rights and freedoms are now domestic terrorists <laughs> or extremists. The second train of thought that they needed to alter in society was the notion of individual responsibility yeah. and independence. And they want to replace it with collective responsibility. This was like every communist playbook. This means the government can now be involved in every aspect of your life. And under this auspice, they can bring in the new climate change agenda, which is basically the same as the COVID agenda. Restrictions on your life, lockdowns, et cetera. But now, not just temporarily, but for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And now, not just for your health and safety, but for the health and safety of the planet. Now, you've gone from where individuals were important and individuals had individual rights and freedoms and were responsible for themselves to flipping the script. And now individuals are the problem on planet Earth and they need to be tacked, traced, yeah. monitored and controlled for the good of the environment and the mm. planet. And that's where the 15 minute city comes in. Yeah. They oh. want to create an actual prison infrastructure <laughs> around you. And when they do that and they're stuck in your district, and they have removed the majority of vehicle traffic, and they have created barricades between the next district, both physical and camera operated. Really? And if people think this is a conspiracy theory, I was in England in 20, uh, September 2022 as part of my European tour. I spoke in England, Ireland, France, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany. So I was in all those places. Oxford, England already has the 15 minute city implemented on the ground, everything there. It is the model for the rest of the world to follow. They have changed it into six so-called districts, just like the Hummer Games. In each district, they remove the majority of automobile lanes. The ones that are still available, they call them ultra-low emissions lanes. So you can only drive on them if you have an electric vehicle or you're a government vehicle. But for the most part, vehicle traffic, like 75% of vehicle traffic has been removed. Now, between your district and the next district, they put physical traffic barricades, cement bollards that can come up from the ground when they don't want you to leave, and traffic cameras that not only monitor you, but take your license plate and will automatically fine you if you leave the district when Why? you're not allowed, because they have lit times where you're allowed to leave and not. Mm -hmm. And they put a, a limit of how many times per year you're actually leave. allowed to leave your own district. Wow. And your district, they tell you everything will be within a 15 minute walk or bike ride from where you live. Yeah. Okay. So that means you're gonna be living in around five square kilometers, basically mm. two and a half kilometers yeah, in each yeah. direction, right. which is exactly, if you remember what they wanted during the COVID lockdown. Yeah, yeah, Don't yeah, go yeah, more yeah. than five kilometers away from your house. So now they're trying to do that and they want you to live like that virtually for the rest of your life. That's how the 15 minute city is set up. And to keep you in the 15 minute city, they're gonna bring in a personal carbon allowance. And how are they gonna do that? They're already telling you how you need to track your carbon footprint. Even if you go book a flight today yeah. on any airline, it's gonna tell you how much the how flight much, costs, yeah. Yeah, you can it's gonna the, say how, how long the flight is, and then how much, how much carbon, carbon you're yeah, using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they want you to pay a tax voluntarily yeah. for it. <laughs> and when enough people pay that voluntary tax, surprise, wow. surprise, it's gonna become mandatory. It's gonna become mandatory. And to give you a little idea, right now the tax on like a thousand dollar flight in Canada or US is like two dollars or something okay, ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. So people are like, why wouldn't I pay it? Why wouldn't I do my part? Yeah. Well, in Sweden, they're doing the exact same thing, but they're about 10 months ahead. So people started doing their part and paying their little two dollar per thousand dollar tax. Okay. Well, guess how much those supposed ta those taxes are now in Sweden? That same thousand dollar flight in Sweden yeah. has over two hundred and fifty dollars in climate tax. Wow, twenty five percent of the cost of the ticket. Holy wow. shit! And they're making it so it's not mandatory. And now they already announced that first of all, Amsterdam Airport, which is one of the most busy airports in all of Europe, it's an international hub, will be banning all private jet traffic. France 
in Paris for fighting climate change under their 15-minute city guide banned all domestic flights that could be done by a train in two hours or less. And soon they're going to keep banning more and more flights. Whoa. Places like Norway are trying to put a limit, a cap on how much people can fly. Because like they said, when you book that little flight and it tells you how much climate you're using, well, how much climate uh, credits do they really want you to use? Mm -hmm. If you read their reports, they say an average person like us will use between 20 and 30 tons per year, 20 or 30,000 wow. kilograms per year, which sounds like a lot, it sounds scary, but in reality it means absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. But they want you to believe this is like a new type of currency. Mm -hmm. And if you look online, like a flight from Toronto to London and back again, it'll cost something like 500 kilograms of carbon or half a ton. Well. Under the Paris Climate Accord Agreement that Canada, the U.S., and many other countries have signed, they have pledged that by 2030, they are going to reduce our so-called carbon footprint from 20 to 30 tons of CO2 all the way down to two. Two. 2,000 kilograms per year. So now imagine that. So imagine you want to fly from Toronto to London and back. That 500 kilograms of carbon that you just used within 12 hours of flying there and back or 14 yeah. hours of flying just used up 20% of your yearly allowance in Damn. one day. Uh -huh. That is how much they want to reduce your ability wow. and mobility. And the best way to do that is by eliminating your automobile ownership. And that's what the 15 minute city is all about. Mm. It's about eliminating private vehicle ownership and it's about instituting this new thing which is gonna be the personal carbon allowance mm. where they track how much carbon you use. So even when you wanna to go to the store, did you walk or did you take a bus? Oh, you took a bus, that's gonna go on your carbon. Oh, what are you buying at the grocery store? Did you just buy meat? That's a lot of carbon. And you're gonna get taxed for every kilogram of carbon you go over your so-called monthly limit. Wow. And they even told you how much they're gonna tax you. Trudeau said by 2030, you're gonna get taxed $170 per ton that you go over. So the average person that does, if you're living at 30 tons per year right now and they bring it down so you can only have two and you're doing basically an extra 30 tons a year, that means you're gonna be paying almost $6,000 a year in extra carbon taxes. Wow. So imagine a family of four. Wow. They're gonna be spending 20 something thousand dollars a year in extra carbon taxes wow. to live the exact same lifestyle they lived the year before. This is what they're trying to implement around us because as we know, that's going to be the number one method of control. If people simply cannot afford a car or afford to eat that steak or afford to even get, a, get their family on the bus, they're going to have no choice but to take that scooter. And why do they want you on a scooter or a bike or on foot? Because you can't go anywhere. A car is freedom. You can travel from one side of the world to the other. Yeah. They don't want that for you. They want you to own nothing and be happy. God, you scare me, They dude. want you to live, work, in the same building. If you look under, I've been in planning and development for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. When you're trying to build up a city, when you're doing a massive development, you're gonna tell these people, we want you to go 60 stories, we want 400 units in there, we want seven floors of underground parking to make sure we got parking for all the people in the building and all the people that are gonna be moving into the city for years to come. Mm -hmm. Smart, build infrastructure. What do they do under the 15 minute city plan? Oh, we're gonna limit it to four or five stories. We're gonna put re retail and commercial on the bottom, residential on top in the same building, and now we're going to have no underground parking and we're gonna have ma a maximum amount of parking for cars so we can limit the amount of vehicle traffic. Why? Because now it's designed so the people live upstairs, work downstairs, have their Starbucks, have their lunch, do their laundry, oh, nice. do their shopping, have their gym, all in the same building complex. Wow. So you basically never leave your building, no matter what. So 90% of your life is spent in that building. And if you do leave, you're not gonna have a car because there's nowhere to park it. And you wouldn't be able to afford one anyway. So you're only gonna have your bike or your scooter, which you can't even use six months out of the year in Canada. So in the winter, <laughs> you're basically on lockdown perpetually. Oh, Imagine you don't have a car in Canada in the winter. Where are you going? Fucking nowhere. Thank you, and that's what they want. They want you to get used so, to literally yeah, living I mean, like you're on lockdown. Yeah, so, are let's, we let's, turning to North Korea? Yeah, yeah. So that's exact. More like China, but not. So, yeah, more like okay, China, so, so not North on. Korea. If so you on, really so want to be honest. So, okay, okay. So when when do you think this is all gonna actually happen? It's, it's, is this for it's, sure it's happening? happening? It's happening. I, mean, I, I live you in Alberta to... as well. I have a place in Alberta. They're already ahead of us. 
Edmonton has already been declared a 15-minute city. They have already broken it up into 15 so-called districts. Okay. They have already changed 80% of the street lights with the so-called new LED smart lights. What they're not telling you is, where did those lights come from? Well, everybody knows Philips technology is the one that created the smart light technology. Yep. And they tried to put it in Toronto, but then everybody found out that these smart lights that they were saying were good because they use less uh, uh, power, power to run really can record audio, video, and interact with each other. So the smart city got shut down for Toronto because nobody wanted to be monitored. So what did they do? They changed the name of the company, and it, the name escapes me right now, uh, but it's on the World Economic Forum website. It's now the new company. Uh, it was previously owned by Philips. It's still owned by Philips. It just has a different new name. name. And they've started replacing all the light bulbs in Edmonton because they know that that's going to be the, one of the first places in this 15-minute city. So wow. now 80% of the streetlights in Edmonton can watch you, can listen to you, and they can track you via your license plate or other identifiers from place to place. So now they have a complete control grid set up for their 15-minute city. Okay, I got to ask you a question. So what about the people... Who vi can you can you visit these 15 minute cities? Of course you can. That's what they're gonna say. They're gonna say, "Oh, it's so easy for you to go from place to place." But in reality, like they did in in England, there's only certain amount of times you're allowed to leave your okay, district, okay. and only certain times of day you're allowed to leave the district. Okay. And if you need to leave, like you have a doctor's appointment or something, they force you to call in and get a special travel pass to leave. Wow. A five square kilometer area of your area. No way. That's what it, a district is around five square kilometers. So they want you living in that area for the vast majority of your life. And they want you living and working and spending the vast majority of your life, not even in that district, but in a specific building in that wow. district. And, and this is just for control? 100%. What else is it for? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you said this is Oxford in the United Kingdom. That's the first place that, uh, that did it. Uh, they, they are, they, like, so it's right already now, implemented. They already have the cameras monitoring people. They already have the ballers that people are smashing. They're already giving out fines to people when they leave when they're not supposed to. And the people are rioting. And by the way, okay. when they voted on this, 94% of the people voted against it. And they said, oh, well, you know, we still know better than you. So the voting is a formality in these cases. It doesn't, they've already made up their mind. And they're not doing it for your good. And they're not doing it because it, it came from England or it came from France. If it's happening everywhere around the world, just like with the pandemic, it's a global thing, yeah, then yeah, you know yeah. it's not for your best interest. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. have a one-size-fits-all policy for the world. What works in European cities that have, A, a much milder climate than us, yeah. and B, totally different infrastructure yeah. that's far more supportive for bicycles and what have you. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. have you ever been to Amsterdam? Not, I've, no. I have about 40 times. And there's a gazillion bikes. There's probably more bikes than there are cars. Fair. They don't have a bike lane. They don't have a bike lane, and they're just fine. It's, it's ridiculous what we have here. Like if, that's another reason why they don't want you to travel and they don't want you to see other countries, because they want you to believe what they're doing is the only way and what they're doing is the best way, wow. and it's not even close. So do you think they're going to control social media as well? Because I heard about Of the, course they're controlling the social media. Bill C-11. Since they did that, I've already started getting literally... 75% less traffic on anything I post since Bill C-11 so, came so out. So that means our content will not be distributed to other countries and other countries' content won't be distributed to us? That means that they can control anything that's posted on a Canadian server. Oh. So if they don't like anything that's on the Canadian server, they can eliminate it. So if you want to post in Canada, you have uh, the best place to do it is get an out-of-country server, like a Swiss server, for instance, okay, okay. and then they won't be able to control it. Yeah, we might oh, have to do that for this episode, bro. Wow. <laughs> yeah, probably. So it's going up on Rumble instead of YouTube? Yeah, but, yeah. Okay, I want to ask you... Uh, one more quick question on um, the the 15 minute city because you were actually out there on foot, right? Yes. Because uh, I saw I saw some of the clips go viral. What? Because I saw you you had this debate. I saw clips time to time. Did you guys did you guys achieve anything when you guys were down there? It, it, in terms of change. It, it talk, where in England in, or in, no? I saw in the one. Alberta. I didn't see that in, in Alberta. In I saw Alberta, one. after I did that interview uh, with the planner, and it's so funny. He's like, "I'm a city planner." Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, talking yeah, about He's like, "Buddy." I've been in planning and development for the last 20 years. How old are you again? And he shut his mouth. Yeah, 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 I've been yeah. working with planners like that for years and years and years. Yeah. And you know what I know about them? They don't know, at, they don't know dick all about why <laughs> they're doing what they're doing. Oh, for sure. Somebody puts something in front of their face and tells them what, what to, to do, and yeah. they write it out as, it's, as they've been taught to do it. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you ask them why they're doing what they're doing, they have they no don't know. clue. So, and I exposed that in that video, which went viral. Yeah, yeah. And that sparked uh, such an outrage that they actually had to have a public discussion and the public was allowed to go there and, and supposedly ask questions. But then when the public went there and tried to ask questions, they shut it down real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's gotten everybody scared to the point where 
the government thought they were going to be able, they wouldn't be able to hide it from the public. They thought they could sell it to the public. Mm -hmm. But then I went and I gave everybody the truth. And now when people hear the term 15 minute city, it immediately sparks concern and it should. When yeah. they hear digital ID, it immediately sparks concern yeah. and it should. When they hear central bank digital currency, which everybody told me I was another conspiracy, what did they announce just yesterday? Oh, the Bank of Canada is now exploring a central bank digital currency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now when people hear that, they get concerned. So the next step is to educate people on why they should be concerned. Mm. And then we provide a better way. That's okay. what we've been doing since the beginning of the pandemic. That's what we're going to do throughout yes. this campaign. And once I get elected, we are going to fundamentally change the way this city is because okay. we will be able to bring in billions and billions of dollars of outside private investment, bring in billions of GDP per year, increase our jobs, increase efficiency, increase productivity. And that's going to go a huge way to increase the standard and lower the cost of living mm. for the average Torontonian. And we're gonna be able to beautify and strengthen each and every community of the GTA. And the best part is, not only do the people get to benefit from it, we get to set the example for every for other around. city to follow. We're yeah. gonna create a new blueprint. We're mm. gonna take away the idea of the politician and we're, we're gonna replace it with the public servant. Yeah. And anybody who does not wanna be a public servant in my administration will not be a part of my administration. Yeah. So we're gonna only have people that are actually looking out for the best interest okay. and representing the people, Yes. Mm -hmm. period. Yes. So, Chris, I want to ask you, because I've seen you in the news countless amount of times and even on social media, banned from this, banned from this. Can you give us a quick list of like all the shit you're banned from? Okay, so I was banned of, originally on my Instagram. I had 250,000 followers. They made it not just national news, international news. It was on Vice World when they canceled, when they canceled me. And they tried to get people to cheer for it. They tried to use me as an example for why they should be able to kill free speech. And it almost worked that a lot of people hated me at that time because yeah. it was right at the height of the pandemic. And people don't realize how scary that is. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, getting yeah. people to cheer when they freaking can just shut you down because they don't like what you're saying. No, that's is horrible. Now too. What yeah, did Voltaire yeah. say? Yeah. He said, I may disagree with, you, with what you say, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it. Yeah, now yeah, that's yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. with integrity and that's how everybody should be. But no, they had people cheering for the fact that they got me shut down. And not only did I get shut down, they had me charged with so many ridiculous crimes. They could defame me in the media. They could call me uh, attempted murderer of politician, attempted murderer of police officers, a wife beater, et cetera, et cetera. Even when I get found not guilty of all charges, they don't make any retractions. No, no, no. And they don't even print that I was found not guilty. No. Now they just print that I was arrested. They can't even say arrested for what because I was found not guilty. So they just mention all the times I got arrested. It's absolutely ridiculous. But it's, I don't know. The, the whole media thing, it's, it's false. And everybody knows that now. Yeah. That's what, if COVID exposed anything, it exposed the collusion between government, media, and pharma. And it exposed how they all will lie in conjunction with each other to manipulate and control you. And those three things had been a very effective method of control up until now. But at this point, the government, the media, and big pharma has the lowest amount of trust in them that they have ever had. So when they ignore me, when they demonize me, it works in my Amen. best interest. Yeah, yeah, it works yeah. in my favor every time. And people that never even knew who I was start wondering why and yeah. wondering who I am. And For people sure. that hate me start wondering why the government's hit going after me so hard. If I'm just some crazy idiot, then why? Why are they coming after me so much? Why are they doing this? It's because they're scared of me. Why yes. are they scared of me? Because I represent the truth. And what's the truth? The truth is... They have been doing this to everybody on purpose and with malicious intent. They're not incompetent. They're not just not knowing how, well, a lot of them are incompetent and don't know how to run a city, but their advisors, their consultants, the people that actually give them orders can be doing things like I'm going to do to make life better for people. For sure. They're intentionally making it worse. Oh, for sure. Every single time. And that's what people need to understand. And they're going to see that. They're going to see that because within a few months, their life is going to change once I'm elected. Mm, there we go. And I want to, sorry, I want to ask you something about privacy because you're talking about the Philips cameras and stuff. Yes. What's, what, and I, I like your stance on a bunch of things. What's your stance on right now? I think they're just implementing, they're putting 8,000 or 80,000 speeding cameras all across Toronto. Yeah, it's ridiculous. The speed cameras are horrible. They're just a money grab. They don't even, they don't, they're not for safety at all because they can't even tell who is driving. Yeah. It's, it's like the red plate. light camera. They just go by the license plate. 
So you could be driving my car, she could be driving my car. And so what? You're gonna, and they just, this revenue generation. Mm -hmm. And why do they have to generate revenue? Because like I said, all these people that are politicians, they've never worked in the private industry. They don't know how to make money. Yeah. All they know how to do is take money from people. That's how they survive, they're parasites. They don't create anything. Someone uh. like me will say, oh, we need billions of dollars? Okay, I'm gonna do a partnership with a company to make them invest billions of dollars into the city, into what I need this invested in. Yes. So I'll improve the infrastructure of the city, improve the quality of life for the people, and make a revenue for the city. What do the politicians think? Oh, we need more revenue for a bigger and more bloated and inefficient government. Let's raise taxes. That's their, not, that's their answer every time. Let's raise taxes. Let's make government bigger. More government spending for this. More government spending for this. And what happens every time you have a bigger government? More poverty. I'm the only candidate that's talking about a smaller government, a more fiscally conservative government. I'm the only candidate that will actually expose the corruption and then follow through okay. on holding these people accountable. And everybody knows that. Okay. Everybody knows that. So all the people that are listening, all the so-called conservatives watching, they think I'm too much of a maverick. But the reality is my policies are quite centric and my policies are quite common sense and my policies will make everybody's life better. So the fact that I'm boisterous, the fact that I stand up for what's right and the fact that I won't take shit from anybody it should be my final qualifier, mm -hmm. not the thing that makes people question me. God, interesting. Well, I wanted to, before we touch on uh, another question, were, were you also banned on Air Canada or something? Oh, yeah, we didn't even finish my ban. So, yeah, that's what we were talking about. I was banned off of uh, Facebook. I was banned, uh, banned completely off Facebook okay. to the point where if I even tried to make a new account with a VPN and a different <laughs> computer and everything, still banned within five minutes. Uh, banned off TikTok to the point where they even ban the hashtag Chris Sky. Oh. So if you try to write hashtag Chris Sky, it doesn't let you. If you try to use the words Chris Sky in a video description, it says contain ban words, but people still get me on there because they'll write Chris Sky for mayor or Chris Sky with two wives. They find like tricky ways to get me on there, but I can't have a TikTok. It's banned instantaneously. They even wow. banned her off once. Wow. Uh, what else? YouTube, oh, don't even get me started. If you, po if you post this on YouTube, your channel will be gone. Uh, and mine, yeah, and mine is uh, no, 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 no way. Let's get the mayor of Toronto. Yeah, on Twitter, okay. I was banned all the way until Elon got it, and Shout then when Elon. Elon got it back, I was on Infowars one day, and I called him out. I was like, "This is bullshit." I'm like, "You gave Andrew Tate and e and uh, Kanye West their Twitter back, but you don't give me mine back." And within a week, I had it back. Oh shit! So I was like, "Oh wow, that's pretty cool." So I got <laughs> my yeah, I got my Twitter back, which was good. That's and that's the best one for political stuff. So that's not, all right. I have a new Instagram now, Chris Sky eighty three. It has around 20,000 followers, even though it's completely shadow banned, but they can't kill it because it's a mayoral candidate ca account. Oh. And so like, they can't say I'm spreading vaccine misinformation when I'm talking about the budget and I'm talking about the TTC. So uh. it's really hard for them to censor. I have my telegram still. I'm censored on it, but uh, I, I uh, you censor your telegram. Yeah, big time. Um, really? If you down, if you, you have to download telegram from telegram.org. If you download it from the Google or Apple store, it will censor my channel. You won't be able to get oh, on. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. So every time there's an update, I lose more and more people on my channel. It's it's crazy. Wow. It's, so everything is censored. You need everything a Chris Sky server, censored. like private server now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Website. Everything is censored. Wow. My website, when I created my website, it got taken down in 45 minutes. And wow. I had the server outside of the country. The only reason it's up now is because my webmaster is an absolute genius. And there's so many hacking attempts on it, but nothing ever works. It hasn't gone down once in the last three years. Wow. Then I was banned illegally off a bunch of Canadian airlines, but I wasn't on a no-fly list because to be put on a no-fly list, you actually had to done something wrong yeah. and they have to have a reason. They have to notify you and they have to re-notify you every 90 days to let you know if they took you off or kept you on. With me, they just had airlines ban me from flying without reason, without rhyme, and just kick me out of the airports. <laughs> And when we had attorneys contact them, <clears throat> sorry, we got a response and we couldn't even read the response because over 80% of it was redacted, all blacked out. And at the bottom it says, redacted by the RCMP under the guise of national security. What the so fuck? they tell me we're not on a no-fly list, but you can't fly. But we can't tell you why you can't fly because it's a guy's, it's a, it's, it's national security. Okay. So even to this day, if I try to go on Air Canada, and even a come and I, Air Canada had a beef with me because I flew there and I wouldn't put my mask on mm. uh, after I showed them that I had an exemption and everything. 
But a company like Flair Airlines, which is an independent company, which I had never even flown on before, if I go on their air, if I go on there right now and I try to book a flight, as soon as I put my name and my birthday, it gives you an error. If you change one character of my name or one a thing of my birthday, it'll go through. And if I call uh -huh. them, I'll tell them about it. They say I'm not banned and I can book. So if I and then when I book it and I go to the airport, they won't honor my reservation. The name don't match. The name does match. The oh, name oh. does match. They'll say, but I booked it through Expedia or I booked it through something else. So they'll say the credit card doesn't match. So then I will call Visa right in front of them and prove. I'll get Visa to talk to the airline and say, yes, Chris Sakotra used this credit card, this card number with his name on it to purchase these airline tickets on this day for this flight today. And they still will not honor our flight. In fact, when we, that's what they did to us when we were trying to fly here. And instead of us flying here, they didn't let us on the plane. They called the RCMP. The RCMP came with an officer who I already had an active complaint against, which is already unethical and immoral and unprofessional and probably illegal. And what did they do? They arrested my wife for videotaping in an airport, which is completely legal, and arrested me for being videotaped in the airport. Wait, what? Yeah. what? Used it as a way to stop us from getting on the plane, and they banned us for life from Edmonton Airport, which is the airport close to our house in Alberta. So just in order, to, just to get here to uh, to uh, nominate myself for uh, the mayor, yeah, we had to drive all the way to Calgary, jump on a plane from Calgary to come to Toronto, and our and my truck is uh, stuck in Calgary now. And, we, and we're fighting that charge right now. Uh, and I already beat, just for the record, I've been arrested 26 times in the last Gosh. 30 months. And I've so far beaten 69, let me say that again, 69 charges. Yeah. 30 arrests. 26 arrests. 26 arrests. Including arrests out of the country. I got arrested in Ireland when I was there. I got arrested in Netherlands so when I was there. So how are you flying international? Private? Or no, no, I can fly on all the international airlines. Oh, just Canadian. Just certain Canadian airlines won't allow. Porter will allow us. Okay, and okay. in fact, Porter Airlines, when we flew on them for the first time, they called us to the front on the loudspeaker when we were in the airport. And everyone's already looking at us because they recognize me in the airport, and especially in the airport because it was one of my most famous videos. Yeah. And... So they're already staring at us. Then they called me out by name on the loudspeaker. So now everyone's looking at me. I'm like, oh, God, here we go again. Yeah. And they call us to the front, and they announce in front of everybody that they're upgrading us to first class because no they're way. fans. Yeah. So, That's freaking awesome. So that was dope. pretty good. That's so pretty awesome. pretty good. So we have some Shout good Shout out Porter. Airline. Yeah, <laughs> shout out Porter. You guys are awesome. Yo, no way. That's, Air, that's Air Transat true. lets me fly, and they're really good. Uh, Lynx is really good. They okay. let me fly. The ones that will not let me fly, Air Canada, WestJet, Flair, Swoop, they will not let me fly on a Canadian airline. And I, I'm a man with no criminal record, never done anything wrong in my life. Crazy. That, wow. That is freaking nuts. I, I, that's just nuts. Okay, so we also want to ask you, we in Toronto have a issue with gun violence, right? So oh, I want yes. to ask you, what are some things that you think we could do to, I don't think we'll ever be able to 100% stop gun violence, but to reduce it. Well, you have to that? go after criminals. You can't go after law-abiding gun owners. I've been a gun owner for a long time. They actually took all my guns. I'm waiting to get them back. And they did everything they could to not give them back to me. Even after I was found not guilty of all my charges, they wouldn't give them back and said I would need to have a special hearing, like another trial, just to get my guns back. Okay. Thankfully, I, I uh, had my lawyer complain to a judge, and the judge agreed it was absolutely ridiculous. So now they have to give me my guns back. But I've been an avid shooter since I was literally three or four years old. Gosh. So I can tell you, I've been around guns for 35 years. Uh, I've never got hurt. I've never seen anyone get hurt. I've never seen a legal gun owner actually hurt anyone with a firearm or otherwise. 99% of all the gun violence in our country is done by illegal guns. You never see an illegal gun owner go into their safe, take out their gun, and go and shoot someone. Except for the, unless they get charged for like somebody coming in on a home invasion. Yeah, 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 and yeah. usually they're acquitted. Unless they did something crazy like shoot a retreating man in the back. Yeah. But, <laughs> but that's, 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 a, that's a, neither here nor there. But to reduce <laughs> gun violence, we should be actually prosecuting criminals. How mm. many guys get out on bail multiple times for violent crimes? That's repeating true. the same violent crime. Meanwhile... We'll put somebody in jail and not give them bail because they got found with possession of a substance. It's absolutely ridiculous. And that's, that's just a huge waste of resources on top of that. Think about all the people that are in jail for nonviolent offenses. And they're telling us that these people cannot be out and about because they're a danger to society. Mm -hmm. No, they're not. And now we're wasting all this money to pay for each one of those people every day to stay in jail when we can just be keeping them on house arrest, 
So they can now be productive members of society, still go to work, still provide Put for their them families, in the minute city. <laughs> and, and let them take care of themselves. Why are we paying for these people? But for the people that commit violent offenses, imagine you got for a gun charge, an illegal gun charge, attempted murder or any of that, imagine you got life without parole. You don't think these people would be thinking twice before going to pull the trigger, especially a little 14-year-old, 15-year-old kid that thinks it's cool when they find out they're not going to get out before they're 40, no matter what? Yeah. Yeah, let them think about that long and hard before they want to go pull the trigger. But no, what do they want to do? Oh, we're going to ban, ban handguns. Yeah, you know, because banning things, that's totally going to stop the criminals from getting them. That's how we stopped everyone from doing drugs, right? We made them illegal. And that just totally got all the drugs out of the city and all the people that wanted drugs no longer could get them, right? But guns are any different. We already have a gun problem and every one of the guns used in an illegal gun. So let's make more guns illegal. That's gonna solve the problem of illegal guns. It Come makes on. absolutely no sense. All it is doing is the liberals taking advantage and man manipulating people emotionally so they can't think logically yeah. and then pretending like they're helping them while doing what they always do, taking away more rights, more freedoms, and yeah. granting themselves more power. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Okay. Now, we're talking about guns. We're talking about violence. You have a lot of fans, but also a lot of enemies, right? But I also notice you're very public. Radis saw you in the gym the other day. You're going to events. We had a podcast earlier, and one of our guys said he saw you at a mayor rally. Are, do you have threats and, and, and security issues? We have threats all the time, but I'm not worried about that. I'm not like Trudeau. I don't have people that hate me so much that I have to walk around with more security than there are people in the crowd. Uh, I can walk around thousands and thousands of people a day. You know how I know? I've been doing it the last three years. Yeah. Every single country. And I have no fear because, number one, the vast, vast majority of people like me and appreciate what I'm doing. Number two, when you know you're doing the right thing, mm. you feel protected. Mm. And I know I'm protected because I've been walking through the fire the last three years and I yeah. still haven't been burned. Yeah. And so I, they can threaten me every day. I fear for my family, but I don't let fear get to me yes. and I don't let fear control me because yes. that's what they've done to every single person in the world. Yeah. They have used fear to, to control. control you, yeah, fear yeah. to manipulate you, fear to do and say things that are against your own best interest. So how do you combat that? You simply don't be afraid. Mm. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> but it's not that simple for a lot of people. But for me, it is. I'm well, not scared. it's simple. It's not easy. I'm not scared of them. Yeah. But they're scared of me. Yeah. And they should be. Yeah, it's the change makers, right? Yeah. Like, that's what we were talking about yesterday, right? It's uh, the young men that the government's most afraid of because they all band together and, and fight it. That's what we've been seeing. That's what United Noncompliance is. For those of you who don't know... First, I created the Just Say No movement, which was to teach individuals that it's up to you to just say no to the mask, to the closures, to the jab, to all that. And as soon as you do on an individual level, you've saved yourself and you might have even saved your family. But in order to create change on a national and international level, we needed to combine people together to just say no. And we called that United non-compliance it was a term i created literally i created that and if you search it on tiktok it's got like almost 50 million uh Jesus. posts now oh, okay. which oh, is crazy wow. i literally created a term in the english language it's like now <laughs> widespread and we it's so effective we broke it down into three phases to explain it to people and it's every young person needs to know this and the first one was the global awakening this was 2020 and the global awakening was when people like me and other people spoke out around the world to inform everybody that everything they were doing was not about health and safety. It was about power and control. Mm -hmm. Boom. Just like that, the light bulb comes on. That's what we call waking someone up. Now that they're awake, they'll never go back to sleep. Mm. But they can be nullified. Because once you're awake, now you're activated. Now you have the power to just say no. Now you have the power to uh, combine with other people and just say no. So what does the government do? They want to get you back on a negative vibration. So they hit you with all types of propaganda to make you believe that no matter what, you're not going to win. No matter what, you can't make any change. No matter what, it's inevitable what's going to happen. Because if they can get you in a negative state of mind, 
Now, even though you're awake, they've nullified your power. Wow. So now you're not, game as well. Yes, because now you're not going to fight back on an individual level. Mm. And that means you're not going to fight back with him and me or anybody else. Because yeah. you're in a negative state. If me and him are in a positive state, you literally cannot connect with us. Yeah, 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 and that's yeah. what they're doing. So the number one thing you have to do when you become awake is stay positive. And that's why every day I'm smiling, I'm laughing, I'm having a good time. And people say, how do you do that? It's simple. I live life the way I want, regardless of what they say. In fact, when they say something, I'll go out of my way to spite it, just to show that I have the moral high ground and I have, I have the perseverance. Yeah, and that's what you need. And that's what's going to keep you positive. Now that you're positive, you can unite with everybody else. Yeah. And now you're ready for phase two, taking action. Mm. And we've been doing it for years with things like this podcast, with tours, with lawsuits, with songs, with satire, with everything possible. We've been making people aware. We've been exposing people and we've been pushing for more, and we've been pushing people to, to actually act out against this. Yeah. And now we're in that transition phase between phase two and phase three. And the government saw phase three coming. So now they started hitting us with all this new uh carbon allowance, digital yeah, ID, 15 minute city, because they want to overwhelm us again. Because when they see what round three coming, round three is the end game. Round three mm -hmm. is holding these people accountable. Mm -hmm. That's when we've woken up enough, enough people, made them take enough action that now we can single out the people responsible, hold them accountable, make them pay consequences for their actions, make examples out of them, and make sure this never happens again. Yes, yes. And how are we gonna do that? Simple. You're going to vote for Chris Sakoshi. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I, I, I want to say action. one thing, too. Whether you guys like Chris or not, one thing that I genuinely respect is what you said. You live life on your own terms. And I think that's very important. A lot of people should do that, right? Whether they, whether you agree or disagree, fucking whatever, but just do what you genuinely want to do. And I think a lot of people, instead of conforming, they should have that mindset as well. And another... What's, go ahead. what's the definition of freedom? To be able Living to do whatever life. you want. Being yeah. tolerant of other people, letting people do what they want. Yeah. So... I might not agree with your lifestyle, but as long as you're not breaking a law or hurting women, children, or animals, how is it any of my business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's all these people in the so-called freedom movement that preach freedom, but then yeah. want to judge how somebody lives their life or want to judge somebody's position on something. That's the complete antithesis of freedom. Mm. So I practice what I preach, yeah. and I'm not a hypocrite. So you can tell me your lifestyle is any which way, and I'll accept it. Unless, like I said, you're doing something illegal or hurting men, women, or, or hurting women, children, or animals. Yeah. <laughs> like, other than that, it's none of my business. Yeah, and yeah. we should all be supporting that. And for the people that don't like me, they still support me as mayor. Because yeah. they don't, why don't they like me? They don't like me because they'll say that I'm too offensive. Why am I offensive? Because I'll tell them the truth. I'll tell them things that they might necessarily not want to hear. But at the same time, they need to. I'm not going to tell them what they want to hear and then stab them in the back like every other politician. Uh, and I actually will stand up for their best interest, mm. unlike any politician. And they like the fact that I'm a ruthless savage because they know that I will fight for them harder than they would fight for themselves. Yeah, mm. yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. huge. To oh, know sure. that you have a dog in the fight, that's the reason why 71% of people don't, didn't vote for the last mayor because they yeah, didn't feel like they had a dog in the fight. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. people look at me, they know they have a dog in the fight. And not just a dog in the fight. They know they have a dog that's going to win that fight. Yeah, yeah. And that's huge. Yeah. Everybody wants to back a winner. Everyone wants to back someone that they know is going to make a difference in their lives. And that's me. Mm. I like that. And Chris, I want to ask you a more selfish personal question. <laughs> I notice you're an amazing communicator, amazing speaker. Whether well, it's in a small group like the three of us right now, or when you're out in the streets in, in the public, was that a skill more learned, or was that a skill that came to you naturally? Completely natural. Okay. I think part of it was learned because in my profession with uh, development, design, and build, and working within the private and public sector, I got to interact with all different types of people. People from the public, people from the private, uh, people that own construction companies, all the way down to the construction workers that worked on the sites, people that were purchasing houses people yeah. that worked in all the different departments. So I literally had to communicate with yeah. all different types of people for 20 plus years. Okay. So I guess that kind of honed my communication skills. But when it comes to speaking eloquently and articulately and being able to remember things with, and never having a script, mm -hmm. that's just something natural that natural. I found out while it was during the pandemic. For sure. that's dope. Was, I didn't know I had that ability. I did, and even when I found out I could speak, I didn't realize how powerful it was until I just saw an entire crowd just stop what they're doing, basically stop breathing and just staring at everything listen. and listening yeah. to everywhere. Even if I talk for like an hour straight, yeah. it's crazy. So I've, it's 
With okay. great power comes great responsibility. Oh, sure. yeah. Yeah. So. Sure. The reason I ask that is because our listeners come, they like these takeaways, right? What's some takeaways you could give for someone who wants to uh, maybe not perfect their speech, but but stand on the grounds of, of what they believe in or even just being more positive? What's some takeaways a listener could have for this? It's very simple. Always stand up for what you believe in. Mm. Never be afraid to do the right thing and never be afraid to voice your concerns mm. when you feel like something is wrong. If everybody did those three fundamental things, they would have never been able to lock us down. They would have yeah. never been able to do yeah. any of the stuff they did. So for all the stuff, all the ways people want to criticize me and criticize my behavior or character, the reality of the situation is if even 10 to 20% of the men in Canada acted more like me, there would have never been a lockdown. We would have never had this mental health crisis. We wouldn't have this economic crisis. And we wouldn't be on the precipice of this new green agenda where the government's going to try to control every aspect of our lives. Why? Because they would know that the people would simply not put up with it. Mm. Everything that happened was because we allowed it. It's that simple. And it went away because we wouldn't allow it anymore. Yeah. That was what the trucker convoy was. Yeah. The trucker convoy was united non-compliance. Yeah. When enough people from all different walks of life got together to just say no for one purpose, mm. freedom. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's an accident that they got rid of all the mandates, including the travel ones, when even the United States didn't get rid of them until just right now? No, it's because we stood up and said, mm. we're not going to accept this. And we are the people, and the people have the power. Yeah. Mm. So now I'm going to take that concept, and I'm going to bring it right to the mayoral position, and we're going to give the power and the city back to the people. Mm. There we go. That's crazy. Well, the trucker comment was crazy, too, when we saw the cowboys pulling up, too. That yeah. Was I, but it was amazing, because it was like, like Chris got so many different people coming together, you know, yeah. like all, all different walks of life for the, yeah. the same one goal, which was all freedom. All around Canada, too. Right? Everyone just pulled up. It was awesome, it was right? Sick. Now I want to ask, why Alberta? Because you said you have a, 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 your I went to Alberta there? because we had so many, uh, so much, so many arrests, so many conditions, so many bails in Ontario, and the conditions and restrictions for COVID weren't getting any better. Yeah. And I know, I know the game, and I know what's going on. And I told my wife, I go, the first place to get rid of the Vax Pass is going to be Alberta. And the, first, and the best place to be at this time with all the COVID restrictions is Alberta. Because the people there simply don't care. Yeah. And I can give you a perfect example. You walked into a, at the exact same time when we left, it was like at the end of 2021. October 23rd, 2021, we started a tour in Windsor, Ontario. And we had 16 stops that took us from uh, Windsor through Ontario, through Saskatchewan, to Alberta, to BC, and back and finish off November 7th in Calgary, where I got arrested for the jamming the airports. But in the meantime, we went to all those different places, uh, and we had left Ontario on the 23rd, right at the heart of COVID. At that point, if you had went to a Canadian tire in Toronto or anywhere in Ontario without a mask, even if you had an exemption, you would get physically assaulted by the staff they would attack you verbally, physically, call the police on you, You'd probably get taken down to the ground. You have to fight. When we landed in Alberta and we were in Leduc, which is just outside of Edmonton, uh, I went to the, yeah, it's nice, it was really nice there. I went to the Canadian Tire and I walked in without my mask and these people ran over to me and I was like, oh God, here we go. <laughs> and you know what they said? Chris Guy. No, oh. how can I help you, sir? Oh. <laughs> They're like, welcome to the Canadian Tire of Leduc. I was like, wow, oh, I actually do feel God. welcome. No and that's exactly how you feel in Alberta, everywhere yeah, you go. Yeah. Except when you went into Edmonton. Edmonton, they had some mask holes going on. Okay, okay. Uh, the, the mayor even kept a special Edmonton mask mandate after it was dropped by Alberta Health Services. So they had an artificial mandate that could not even be enforced in the city. And you still had, like, you'd walk into the gas station and there'd be, like, this six-foot-two jack guy that just came off the oil rig and he's wearing a mask because the mayor told him to God. like that's what that was the attitude in edmonton so the big cities is always a problem but uh, yeah i was shocked because i actually own a property out in, in calgary as well and i live back and forth and uh i noticed it's just definitely more conservative in a lot of their point of views which I, you know being young i didn't really know the difference and as an adult i can appreciate that oh, right oh i do you appreciate it, especially in a time like COVID. it was yeah that's where it really be, becomes noticeable yeah because the average person in Toronto wouldn't even come within six feet of you if you weren't wearing yeah. a mask and tell you to put a mask on and yeah. tell you you're, doing, you're a grandma killer. In Alberta, they wouldn't do that. <laughs> grandma killer. Like, <laughs> fucking hell. Am I wrong, though? <laughs> no, exactly. It's like, there's, there's, as soon as you get to Ontario, there's a certain attitude, there's a certain, <laughs> like, 
there's a thing in the air. And but we're gonna change all that. We're gonna mm. make it livable again. Okay. Okay. So wrapping up, before we get into our, we do a thing called a final four. Before we get into that, we're like the number one podcast in Toronto. Okay. And one of the biggest Toronto rappers, you seem to have a problem with him. There was like a little clip. YG, do you still have beef with this guy? Okay. Let's first clear of all, this up once and for first all. First of all, let's clear this up. Yeah. I have no idea who the hell YG is. <laughs> to me, he's some stupid guy pretending like he's a rapper and nobody even cares about his music. And okay, that's why he always and that's why he always has music. to start beef. That's why he always has to start beef to get clout because his music can't do it for him. He Yikes. came up to me in Gallery Nightclub. We were in Vancouver. We were out for our friend's birthday. Okay. He was there for somebody's birthday, apparently. Okay. Hit all their people recognized me. They asked me to come into the booth. They're actually allowed to smoke weed in there, which was great. So I smoked, the, I don't drink, but I smoked some weed once in a while. So I was smoking some weed with them and they were all asking me for pictures. Okay. I didn't know who any of these guys were. I knew they were rappers, but there was like 10 people in the booth. I yeah, don't yeah. know who they are. Mm -hmm. Never seen any of them before. And that's not really my scene. Like I, I like music, but I don't know all the Toronto rappers. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not 20 years old. And so he comes up to me and he says, can we take a pic? I say, sure. So we take a pic. He's like, yo, let's do a snap. And he's like, I'm like, all right. So he, I do a snap with him. And he's like, what's up? What are you doing? Where are you going? And I tell him, I'm here in Val Gallery, Vancouver. And in a couple of days, I'm taking off from my European tour. I'm flying into the UK. The next day, I, I see that he posted me on Instagram. And he posted the snap that we did. Mm. And he's calling me a fake and a fraud and telling everybody that I'm vaccinated because I told him that I was flying to the UK. Oh. You don't have to be vaccinated to fly to the UK. You didn't even have to take a COVID test to fly to the UK at the time. This is uh, September 2022. Okay. So there's no more travel mandates since May. Yeah. And there's no mandates or anything for UK. So he's telling everybody that I'm vaccinated and I'm a fake and I'm a fraud. And he's telling everybody that I went up to him in the thing. But reality is, he came up to me asking me for a picture. Then he came up to me asking me for a snap. I took a snap with him, and then he started uh, spreading garbage about me. Why did he do it? Because he wanted the beef. Why? Because he thought he could get clout. So then they did that clubhouse thing with me, and it was really set up like a hit piece and a trap to try to make me sound racist and bad on the on the air. And it didn't really work out for their favor. Mm. I called him a bitch. Dude, did you want something crazy? Literally a couple of weeks ago, YG filmed the music video, like here. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Good yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. again, I, I, just, I just have to ask, YG, man, if you're watching this, you got to go on the podcast and uh, tell us your story. Tell your story. Yeah, yeah. YG, why don't you tell him about your dad and what he got caught doing? You guys know about YG's dad? No. How he, no. Likes, to, how he likes to kidnap and molest little boys? Yeah, ask him about that. Yeah, he said he was going to slap my wife on the clubhouse. So if you want to get called out, I'm going to call you out. He's a product, YG is a product of a broken home where his daddy likes to molest little boys. And I'm very highly against pedophiles and all that stuff. And that's actually one of my platforms for mayor. We're gonna stop Soji, which is sexual orientation and gender identity from getting in the schools. We're gonna stop drag queens from performing at the schools. If you know, just a couple weeks ago at York Mills Collegiate School, the deputy mayor of Toronto, Jennifer McAlvey, mm -hmm. spent municipal tax dollars and attended and promoted a award-winning drag performer that's to fun. go to the school nah, and not read stop. to the that's kids, fun. perform, like, perform. That's for the up. kids. That's fucked up. Yeah, so there's not gonna, that, that should be investigated. She should actually have to resign and she should be investigated and anybody promoting that should be. So that's one of the things I'm highly against. And when you mentioned YG, you reminded me about that. So ask YG about that. Ask YG about his daddy. Ask YG why he came up to me and asked me for a Snapchat because he thought he could get clout. And then ask God. YG why he made up a story about me being vaccinated because I told him I was going to England. Congratulations. You're an idiot. <laughs> to, to, clarify, wow. to clarify, we don't want no smoke from YG. <laughs> hey, you guys ask me a question, I yeah, tell the listen, truth. Listen. If I'm lying about anything, listen. am I lying? I'm not lying. <laughs> ask him. You can search. You can look it up if I'm crazy. Gosh. Wow. Yeah, well, let, let's, you let's let's caught me off guard for that one. Yeah, yeah, you guys, bro, you guys asked crazy that, questions. That I got to give you the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. no, no. And, and we're glad you gave wow. your honest answer as well, right? Because, uh, hey, we're just here to ask questions. We're just here to ask questions. That's all we do. That's our job. Uh, and we're going to go into our <laughs> final four. <laughs> we're going to go into our Are final ready? four. Are you sure? <laughs> Fucking hell. Wait, wait, hold on. Before, before we end this, I got to ask. Chris, I know the city needs you, and you want to stand here and represent the city. Yes, sir. But if you if you had to leave... You've been all around the world. What's the next place, place to live? I have a Mexican residency. Oh. I got that. <laughs> I got it because, not because I particularly thought Mexico was the greatest place in the world, but I got it because, as a, uh, basically for peace of mind. Because if they put another vaccine mandate for travel in, if you have a residency or a secondary passport to another country, you can fly there. 
Okay, okay. So you yeah. will not be stuck in Canada like a prisoner. Then once I fly to Mexico, you can fly I can fly anywhere in the world. So Smart. I use it as a way that I would preserve my ability to come and go as ca from Canada as I please. So I could okay. leave with my Canadian passport, my Mexican residency, and I could always come back with my Canadian passport, even under mandates. Okay. So I didn't get it as a way to like leave Canada per se, but I got it as a way that I could leave and c come and go from Canada go whenever I want, freely. which it should be everybody's right as a Canadian citizen under Agreed. any circumstances. Agreed. But as we saw, they took that right away from us. So I took precautions to make, it ha to make that happen. And I call it being internationally nomadic. Yeah, and it's yeah, a new yeah. term I use for like as post pandemic. And I believe anybody that has either an ethnic origin to another country or financial means or any ability to get a secondary residency or secondary passport do so. Because do you think that's gonna be the last pandemic in the history of mankind? Mm. Absolutely not. So okay. even if it's 10 years from now, if you have it, you'll appreciate it okay. when the time comes. Okay, I appreciate that. that was Great yeah, takeaway. Take right. well, the last four fun. questions we ask every single guest, a bit yes. more lighthearted. Release, go ahead, more take it away. on the fun side. No problem, brother. God. So, as I say, you have to switch lives with someone for 24 hours. Who would you pick? Justin Trudeau. <laughs> and I'd undo everything he did to the country in the last eight years in 24 hours. We got some clown makeup in the back. And then I'd feel. go and I'd turn myself in to the police for all the bad things I've done. Oh, <laughs> right before, my. right before I, right that's, before that's I, I take out of my funny body. Answer. That's a great answer. That's a great that's answer. Good. There you go. All right, next one is, um, <laughs> who would you say is the most motivating person of all time for you personally? Motivated by 80s action movies and freaking cartoons from back in the day. I don't know. It's, been, it's just been... Chuck Norris. For me, it's always <laughs> been about wanting to do the right thing and wanting to protect people that can't protect themselves. Like, mm -hmm. I always had that in me. I, even on the schoolyard when I was eight years old, I heard if that. I saw a bully bullying someone else, I would get in front of them and say, why don't you try that with me? And then <laughs> they would or they wouldn't, but... One way or the other, it wouldn't work out too well for them. Mm -hmm. And that was my attitude for the rest of my life. Fair. I don't know, just the way I was made, I guess. Awesome. Mm, okay. Uh, the third question. From the day you were born till now, your whole life is written in a book. What would the title of that book be called? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you laugh? I don't know, because it could go, it could go so many ways. <laughs> My life isn't over yet. I guess before you can name the book, I'd have to see how it ends. No, no. So from, 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 from now to now, yeah, I mean. Yeah. beginning to now. You could call it the man trying to save the world. Oh, the man trying to save the world. I like that. Okay, I like that. Okay. And then the last question is, if today was your last message to the world, what would your last message to the world be? Simple. Never give up. Never give in. As long as there's people like me that will fight to the death, they can never win. And there's mm. always going to be people like me. So they'll never win. Jeez. Wow. Fucking fire. Yeah, the way he says yeah, let's get, let's get a little, little, little. Yeah, let's go. Let's Chris Sky in the building, guys. Let's go, guys. Chris Richard Sky. <laughs> Man. Chris Sakocha. Chris Sakocha. And guys, I think that wraps it up. No, Honestly. we got to talk about my barbecue. We oh, sure, sure. Talk yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. Barbecue. yeah, yeah. This is your part. Yeah, this, this is your, your part plug. to plug in. I was going to say, say whatever you want to yeah. say. May 27th, we're having a massive barbecue, a food drive, and a food bank event. It was inspired by when I saw that massive lineup at the food bank and people standing there like we're in a communist country and it was disgusting to me. So we're gonna have a massive barbecue with free food, free ice cream, free entertainment, and all we're asking is for the people that show up is to bring an item for our food bank. We're collecting items now. We're at 1430 Birchmount Road in Scarborough. We're going to have halal options for everybody. Let's go. Yeah, that's right. You know, <laughs> make sure everybody's covered. <laughs> It's true, bro. It's no true. pork on my fork. Out of the community. Yeah, yeah. And we're doing this to show people that you don't need to have taxpayer dollars. You don't need to have the clout of the government. All you need to have is good intentions and the community behind you. And we're going to come together and we're going to show people there's a way better way to feed thousands of people and have a good time doing it. There we go. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Wow. Phenomenal. You want to take this away, then, bro? Yeah, before we leave, other other uh, places Plugs. we can find you. Where oh, sheesh. yeah. Go to our website, chrissky4change.com, and you'll see everywhere I'm going to be. We have a big event on Saturday, but it's a private thing. It's actually a yacht party where they have 80 yachts all strapped together, and they're having me what? come to be like a master wait, of wait, ceremony. Wait, wait, wait. Is our invite still in the mail? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was invited at the last second, and I didn't advertise it because they're just making me go there as like a master of ceremony. I think it's going to be fantastic. Okay. Right after this, tonight, we're going to a car meet in, uh, in Woodbridge at okay, La Paloma awesome. for Phantom Car Meets. Okay. Uh, on, the eight, on the 19th, I'm having my first ever in-person Bitcoin conference. And I'm the only mayor or any politician anywhere in the world yeah. that is actually putting out a six-point plan about Bitcoin and the government. And we're doing it as a way, <laughs> that's right, and we're doing it as a way to make the public aware of cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, 
so they can understand just how dangerous a central bank digital currency is. Mm -hmm. And we're doing it right at the time the where the government decided they're going to try to implement this on people. Okay, so, so real quickly, because... Oh, yes, and on the, and the, on the 17th, we have, uh, we're doing a meet and greet at the Budapest restaurant on the Danforth. Everybody can come and get whatever they want, order their own food, and just a chance to all meet up with us. And, awesome. yeah, and it's just going to be a great way to... Oh, yes, we want all the other mayoral candidates to come too, but of course they won't because, you know, they don't want to be anywhere near me. <laughs> yeah, okay, so real quick, because we both come from a crypto background. Can you, like, in like 60 seconds tell sure. us Sure, the first part of the plan is educating the public about Bitcoin, how yep. it works and everything else. Yep. The second part of the plan is finding ways to implement Bitcoin payment structure within uh, the government okay. so they can start using it, and yes. they can start using it and putting some of our... Uh, uh, investing into it as well because okay. if we even have a small percentage of investment oh, into sure. Bitcoin, it's a very good hedge against all the other things that were 100%. inflation and everything else. Yep. The third part and fourth part of the plan are trying to create uh, the infrastructure to start actual widespread adoption for Bitcoin yes. payments in the private sector, okay. including small businesses, providing incentives for more and more small businesses to utilize it. And then finally, is to create uh, international infrastructure so mm. we can have peer-to-peer -peer transactions almost seamlessly yes. yeah. with, with people uh, all around the world, yeah. which will completely negate the need for any central bank digital currency. Sure. So mm. if they do try to bring one out, even the average person that has no idea what a cryptocurrency is now will have more than enough knowledge and wherewithal to be like, no, 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 I don't need that. I got this. I'm good. And they'll know the importance of cat. Especially with the social media and the young audience behind you, I yeah, think we man. can take this one home. I'm telling you, we can. If the young people get out and vote, they all th they've all been so disenfranchised, and they've all been told that their voice doesn't matter. This is the one time that it will. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah, win yeah. an election with the lowest amount of votes ever. And all we need is for the people that don't normally vote Just to, to vote. get out and vote yeah, one time in their vote, life. Bro. We're going to have to go vote, bro. Let's go, man. That's our pledge for Chris. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you. Awesome. Again, Chris, thanks for so much for coming on. Guys, yeah. we put all of Chris's plugs in Down the description below. below. If you guys have the time, come check him out in person. This is going to be like a great opportunity to, to network and meet Chris in person. Yeah. And you find me at the gym every day just like he did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was so, yeah, it was so random, too. All right, and that rounds this one up. Like always, guys, stay, stay seeking success. success. Easy, guys. Love you guys. Let's God bless. Go. Good shoot, man. Wow.